based on an idea from Steel Studios. It started as a technology demonstration from technology that Thomas Wall and Thomas Herbert invented. The initial idea of this project was basically to shoot something interesting, both visually and in a technical way, that was challenging enough for us to say, look, this is what we did. And why not contact the best person, in our opinion, to do something like this with us, Victor Perez, who is very passionate about directing as well as visual effects. He mentioned that he had a, a new technology he wanted to discuss with me. He wanted to discuss how to put it in practice, so how to use that technology to tell a story. I started uh, developing this story, I remember, when I was at the film school. I never had a real idea on how to do it, but it was the idea of having someone interacting with himself, or herself in this case, in front of a mirror. It's like you are someone else entirely, but it's actually you. It's just you are not aligned with yourself. I think it was just one week later, we get this script of the full short film. Victor has already figured everything out. Conceptually, it's not that difficult, that complex. It's quite easy just for me to understand that the mirror is repeating the structure and is repeating the nightmare. So on so many levels, it's an echo. The film itself uh, was all against green screen with motion control not just for the main action but also for the mirror that was in the frame. So we basically had a camera that was on one motion control filming the image that's presented on the mirror and another one presenting the live action both at the same time all in one take. We had the big motion control cyclops that's sitting behind me. That's the biggest motion control that uh, Mark Roberts produces. It's very precise. It's on a 16 meter long rail and uh, weighs about four tons. We also used the Bolt from Mark Roberts, which is a high speed Cinebot. We had the Cyclops shooting what would be the, the main framing of the shot. And when we saw the mirror in shot, the, the actual image in the mirror was shot on the Bolt. So what we delivered from the Stiller Studio side for this project was probably the most optimized plates and camera data, motion control data, that you could possibly get out of these kind of robots. It's very difficult to get the contrast and the lights in the right position to work for both cameras. I mean, obviously, if you backlight one camera, then that's a front light for the other camera and so on and so forth. But also you have the challenge of trying to actually get a good key out of it. So not only do you have to light from two directions and get it to look good and to match the background, you also have to find a way of getting green behind the subject from two directions and also having good enough lighting on the green to pull a decent key without having to do, you know, a mountain of rotoscope. And then also the lighting for the, the background is more or less set because it's made from the plates that we took when we lit the live environment. Look, I can see in real time what the camera sees with the whole environment. In terms of visual effects, this is probably the most complex project I ever worked in my whole life. In terms of compositing, it's so complex because long takes, 3K, two plates that needs to be perfectly synced. You have to get like the proper proportion of the mirror just to match what's going on within the mirror and outside the mirror to get everything balanced. And every single frame of this short film is green screen. So every single frame has heavy composite. Sometimes we are going to not only to make the reality to be out of sync, but also it's going to be in a different speed. And that is something that attract me so much, is to mix two different planes of speed of the same reality contemporarily. 
what we ended up doing was speed ramping directly in camera to create a, a speed ramp that changes the time of the action but doesn't change the, the speed of the move going through the shot. Since we were doing very precise speed ramps of uh, the camera move, uh, we also needed to be able to uh, control the frame rate of the camera accordingly. And we did this by using something called frame triggering, uh, where the motion control system uh, generated a trigger pulse for each frame taken by the camera, basically. So by combining a, a speed ramp shot for the mirror, but not a speed ramp shot for the actual shot from the Cyclops view can create this almost traveling in time effect. The cameras are not operated manually, are not operated even in real time. We create the movement based on a 3D model, which is really cool. But then you have to be prepared because it's not the camera following the actress, it's going to be the actress following the camera. I've never been in a place like this before. This is a, a whole different world. This is my first time shooting in, in green screen, actually. It's been quite fun so far. <laughs> you have to be very present, also very focused, because there's many things you need to, to have in count as uh, positions are very important, are like crucial. We were rehearsing with music, so what Maria was performing on set was kind of a dance. So she was in every single beat of the music in a certain position in the space and with a certain aspect of reaction to an image that wasn't there. Maria was supposed to look in the mirror and see herself in the future, for example, and react to what was happening in the future. So it was very important that we knew how much we were offsetting time uh, so we had to come up with a, a good way to preface that. It's really abstract when you are on set. The guys at Sealer has an amazing software to put them together right after the shooting. We actually developed a plugin for Maya where we could preface the speed ramping in 3D and then um, export the speed ramps uh, out of Maya into Flare which controls the motion controls. So we could import speed ramp curve to achieve the, the effect in the real world. It's quite a magic when you look at both together and you see like she's reacting perfectly. And it's not about like the typical, you know, you are in front of a green screen so you don't know what is going uh, on in, in that space. No, it's about yourself being in a certain position later in the reflection of a mirror that you don't even know. So in terms of imagining the story it was really, really complex. After getting the shooting, that was of course the most important part because the story is highly conditioned by the, the shape. Then we have to create the environments. We have to create the interaction with the, with the environment and also create the sound and, and the whole theme. So for me it was very important the sound conception in terms of the breathing and the heartbeat because I wanted to feel every single sound very close to you. That's why also we decided to, to get with the Dolby Atmos. have a possibility to bring the quality of the sound in terms of the ambience that you can get within the scene. So we have this huge space to move sounds and move music. I compose the, the score thinking in this way, that we have a lot of space to put things in, around the, the audience. We start developing this idea of a very unique sense of music blended with sound design. 
The result of these ideas is the combination of organic sounds that comes from the orchestra, the live orchestra, and the electronic sounds that comes from the, the synthesizers. The interesting thing is that we use the, the orchestra as a synthesizer and the synthesizer as an orchestra. When we start recording the orchestra, we, um, we, don't, we don't record in a classical way, but we use the orchestra as a layers of sounds. So we have this uh, suspended harmony uh, on the bottom and on top of that we have this sort of breath of, of orchestra and uh, other strings effect. And in between of this layer we try to build this uh, soundscapes with synthesizer. When you listen to the score you can't understand what is the live orchestra and what is the, the, the electronic sound. The challenge is to keep people in a mood they don't even understand why it's happening, which is more or less what is happening to, to the, the character in there. So we founded the company with a vision to produce groundbreaking motion control in the same pace as we would shoot any ordinary movie. And just seeing what the guys have done makes my heart warm. It's so brilliant. It's fantastic. It's probably the best stuff I've ever seen coming out of motion control. I don't see other examples of this kind of crazy job. The team did a fantastic job and I'm really proud of what we've been able to achieve to, to pull this together. It's a pretty impressive shot. This project is really special and what we're going to do here is something that no one has done before. So to be part of a film uh, where things are so new and special, I mean, it's just like a gift. What else can I say? It's, uh, it's an achievement. I know it's been a ride for everyone.